remember the love we share. Embrace the friends who care. Celebrate the life we live. Give all that we can give today. For chronic pain as well as fibromyalgia, always there are multiple um, treatment methods which are adopted by many uh, patients. It's not just one. A combination of things which are usually used for this complex disease. And so we do not know whether one is uh, mainstream or one is alternative because everything is being complemented. And so it's not very clear. So that is why are complementing the Western treatment, whereas acupuncture and Ayurveda are completely alternative to any other uh, uh, to the Western medicine because you could substitute in place of this any of these two systems. That's why that alternative medicine definition is alternative to Western medicine because it has its own theory, philosophy, and treatment methods which are completely alternative or completely different from Western medicine. We also talked about sepsis B. That's the neurotransmitter that's responsible for pain transmission in the central nervous system. And there have been at least four studies, more now actually, that have shown that substance P levels are significantly elevated in patients with fibromyalgia compared to controls. And those, uh, some of these are here. Okay. There are different ways of imaging. And one, the way all of us in here are imaging is what I call that it's an intuitive sense. You can't actually say that it looks like that it's as vivid as that clock, but you have a knowing about it. So if you if you have that knowing about it, you're imaging. A lot of people get mixed up and think, oh, when they close their eyes, it should be this you know technicolor kind of very vivid picture. No, that's only one way of imaging. Awareness of the health of the entire being. It's not just about the physical being. It's not just about the mind. It is the health of our spirit, the health of our mind, the health of our body, and how they are working together. Wellness is also about recontexting illness. When it becomes in the context of a piece of our life, we can actually take it more serious. If illness has become our life, we become discouraged. We lose hope. Because that's all there is. The heart rate variability biofeedback that does something more powerful. What it actually does is strengthen the autonomic nervous system's regulatory reflexes, and that's critical. Now you'll see in the slide coming up when I talk about regulatory reflexes, I'm talking about cardiac, respiratory, and blood pressure. The two divisions of the autonomic nervous system are the sympathetic branch. And I'd like you to think of the sympathetic branch as the accelerator. Right? That speeds things up, it gives you energy. It will sweeten the blood enough, it will elevate blood glucose enough to get tryptophan in the brain. The other default food is like a half a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But now, there's a very small amount of uh, protein in peanut butter. I would not worry about the protein in peanut butter. Uh, it's, it, it's going to sweeten your blood glucose enough to activate tryptophan. So, um, and maybe what I, I should do to clarify the point, the brain barrier, through which certain amino acids are absorbed into the brain for critical functions in, in, in the brain. Uh, and they're only seven. They're only seven. So I introduce to you Dr. Barbara Cherry. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you all for being here today. Um, it's a beautiful day, and it's, it just seems like this is a fabulous event, so thank you for inviting me to this. Um, let me uh, just start by um, saying, I want to say thank you. I'm going to talk about a couple of different areas of research that we've been conducting over the past several years. And this has been done in collaboration with a number of different individuals. Um, the, the names on the left are faculty here at um, Cal State Fullerton 
but we also have been collaborating with a number of students. So I've only mentioned a few.